The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, me, and advice show from the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. Oh, I'm Ugh. so, I can't, I can't contain myself anymore hearing that um, um, uh, amazing enunciation mm. crisp, mm. and that diction. It's because, it's, you know, you got the lips, there's no the tip of the tongue. There's no Cheetos residue in there right, blocking the, the sound waves. The teeth. It's Pick Watch 2019. Had the water pick for a little over two weeks or so sitting in the Amazon box and I looked at it every day and said, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Mm. But I had about 10 minutes to kill just before recording, and I got in there, and I just super soaked the heck out of it. I uh, I had a lot of trepidation the first time I used my water pick, because mm. I was fairly sure that there was, there's definitely a pressure at which you know you're going to rip <laughs> rip it up <laughs> in there, yeah. and it, you're just sticking this tube in your mouth and going for it. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm just worried that if I ever used one, I would accidentally set it to sandblaster. Yeah, and it would just tear both the enamel and then everything underneath the enamel, uh, it just straight out of my mouth. But I gotta say, refreshing. Other than the horrible pain of pressure washing my inside skin, um, uh-huh. I gotta say, the results, folks. I saw a little bit of tastation come out of there. Whoa. And this, yeah, and those haven't even been around <laughs> since like 1999. Do you so. think if we mention Tastations enough, eventually the Please. company will just give us the IP? No. I don't right think here. it exists. That, wait, who owned Is that Nestle? It's Hershey's, if memory serves. Hershey's. Seen. Yes. But anyway, I used the water pick today, and I my Congressional Medal of Honor has yet to appear, and I'm confused That's about so that. so strange. Yeah, or, or at least a big boy sticker. Uh, Griffin, I do need to know when you said the the pain in your mouth of, mm. of blasting your inside skin. Blasting it. How can you compare that? I've never used a water pick. Could you compare that level of pain to something for me? Um, have you ever used one of those massage chairs at the airport that had yes. like the balls in it that go in? Imagine just putting your teeth right into one of those somehow, like sort of sitting mm. on it teeth first, and just sort of get over the hygiene issues associated with that. But, you know, physically, that's sort of the feel that we're talking about. Um, and then well, you're- I don't care for that. And then the water, there's a sort of, uh, you know, manners issue of what you do with the water as it's being blasted in. Uh, you don't want anybody to see the unsightly side of you, you know, getting on in there and just dribbling water out of your mouth uh, like some sort of sea monster. Uh, so do you swallow it all? The answer is yes, and it's bad. Now, I just assumed that as you did it, you would kind of keep your mouth open, and it would just be like pouring from you like a character in a sci-fi show that was drowning on dry land. Sure, like a human right. water feature situation. Yeah, yeah. but if folks- you close your mouth tight around it, it'll blast out your nose, and that'll oh, do a no. number on the sinuses. But- I have so much air moving between my there. The gaps between my teeth are so big, and I'd never Space appreciated it. Between, yeah, there's a little. Di- I, look at teeth. Mm-hmm. Let him keep going. I want. Nope, that's all the words I know. That's all the words he knows, because it's the only words in the song. I used my water pick today. <laughs> Let's let's not lose the the point. We can of this. we can make jokes, but I used my water pick today. Where is that? We need a combo t-shirt. I used my water pick today, and hey, I might go eat some charcuterie later. What's up? Like just, just a two, and then once the charcuterie is trapped in my teeth, I'll use the water pick again in a never-ending cycle until one day I die. My favorite part is that the sort of relationship I've built and how it's evolved with my dentist, 
who at my first cleaning was like, oh my God, because it had been a while since my last confession. And then every sort of, you know, six months or so, he, he would be like, wow, you really need to floss. And he'd be like, uh, you should really be flossing or at the very least go get a water pick. And then like on my last appointment, he was like, I know you're not going to floss. I give up, <laughs> go buy a water pick. And then I used it two weeks later. Um, are you sort of hesitant to use the teeth again? You kind of hate to because it's like. I'll be honest. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and I'm trying. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out if there's other holes I can get the food in. If there's other sort of stuff I can there, do. Yeah, is there other places to put the food? There's hmm. got to be other places I can get the food in. And I know the first thing you're going to laugh and joke about for this scuzzy podcast is my ass. I would never. <laughs> I was going to say you you could freeze dry it, crush it up, snort it right up your nose. That's now we're going somewhere with that. Yeah. Let me I'm trying to I'm trying to think outside the bun, Griffin. I'm not just gonna say ass. I'm gonna oh, yeah. put it up your ass. Oh, put the food over your ass. Just put Get, it eat like a pickle up your butt. I would never, never say, that. say that. But That's disgusting. If you wanted to nose boof some frozen shark uterine, then I don't think there's a law against that. Uh mm. I have an exciting uh uh, uh an exciting new feature. Oh? Uh, for the podcast that I'd like to pivot seamlessly into before, because Griffin mentioned taste stations, and a, a half mean, an hour ago, half an hour ago, I, my mind has been on taste stations, um, and this feature I think I'm going to call it "Where is it now?" And <laughs> this is a feature where people on the internet talk about a thing that they miss very dearly, and we can all share in that with them and be there and bond with them. And this is a thread from the Straight Dope. Are you guys down with this? Are you feeling this right now? Are you asking? Are you down with me? Are you asking us, or is this yes, part of the comment? Yes, I'm asking you. Okay, yes, let's are go. You down? Are we go? Are we good? Yes, yes, good. Yes, Travis, verbal confirmation. Yes, I, this yes, is from, Justin. This is from the straight dope. Wolfmeister, February 27th. Holy fucking shit! Today, the day we're recording this, exactly the day, 15 years ago, <laughs> 2004. Granted. This is not the most pressing matter of the day, <laughs> but I'm sure it's important to some people. I visited the Hershey's website in 2004, and they don't even list it as one of their products. On message boards, it is rumored to have been discontinued. Of course, the only message board that matters is the straight dope message board. So, are Hershey's taste stations discontinued? I find it hard to believe these things are unpopular. IMHO, these are far better than Werther's, which are incredibly overrated. Whoa. Get them. Fuck them If taste up. stations Shots have, fired. have been discontinued, is there anything similar out there? Werther's. And you know what I think of Werther's. <laughs> they say it right here. You know what I think okay. of Werther's. All right. And then a day later, they say, well, there's no responses, okay? A day later, well, I see my posting has gone from relative obscurity to total oblivion. Whoa. Some of the dopers here must have a sweet tooth? Isn't anyone else a fan of these candies? <laughs> <laughs> Free range maniac follows up. I'm sure I've seen him up here. I work in a large chain drugstore, so I'll have a look and see if I'm right. Maybe they just discontinued them in the States? I know you have candy and chocolate we never see in Canada. Uh, Paul in Qatar says, what were they? Wolfmeister, the original. Paul, taste stations are, perhaps were, a great tasting hard candy sold in bags of about one pound. They came in a lot of flavors. <laughs> butterscotch, caramel, and so on. To no, me, it's not. That was it. Those are the only two. You don't, there's butterscotch, chocolate, and caramel. So there's not a me, so on. A lot there's of, three total. To be and a lot of other people, they were the greatest tasting candy ever made. <laughs> Wait, well, there, they weren't, I'm sorry, there wasn't like a strawberry and cream one? What am I thinking of? There was like a been. hard candy that was like a swirl. Ooh, design. yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know. Um, here, okay, so Free Range Maniac says, yeah, I checked today. Uh, they're being discontinued. Maybe they're more popular in Canada. That was February 28th, 2004. October 24th, 2012. Anno Domini. 2012, Chuckles 14901 <laughs> is coughing. <coughs> the dust. What's this old post? <sighs> 
Look, I can just make it out. Some of the inscriptions here. It's about these stations. Hmm, I gotta get <laughs> I gotta get my two cents on these. Hold on a second. Tap, tap, tap. There are a few candies as delicious as the taste stations. The mint was smooth and refreshing. The caramel is tasty. But there's only one candy that ever made chocolate. Taste stations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no one has made such a delicious candy as the chocolate, which tastes like dark chocolate or fudge. It is wondrous. My heart is breaking. I would love it if I could find a place that still sells them for shipment to the States. I would pay $10 a bag of mint oh. and chocolate taste stations. <laughs> Whoa. Shipping and handling not included. <laughs> Wow. So if you can reach through time and find taste stations, this cat will pay you ten dollars for a bag, just not gonna cover just the, uh, what the shipping oh, and you handling. Have, this is see a need, fill a need kind of deal. I'm saying maybe the next McRoy like endeavor isn't a podcast, isn't a TV show, isn't a graphic novel. Bootleg but taste stations. It's bootleg taste stations. If we're making mm. ten bucks a pound on these things, now this I'm is saying. this is breaking bad too. We, we got that. We got people, that. We got that crunchy brown. We get some people to build some compartments into their fenders on their old jalopies. Have them drive them down. You know, maybe we make them up in Canada. And then they drive them down to the states. We sell them there, and then we fly the money down to I don't know Cuba, maybe, and we buy maybe more Cuba. ingredients there. And the cycle continues. That tastations money, baby. That was a lot of Tastations talk. Bring it back. Uh, but I think in the meantime, we should do a question. I love that, Griffin. You read my mind, basically. I was on a three-hour drive this morning when I got hungry. I spotted a sign on the highway for a hotel chain that I knew had free breakfast. I like whatever you're doing here, Justin. This it. is a very, like, noir kind of reading you're doing. I was on a three-hour drive. I think it's appropriate. I think it's appropriate no, for the question. I didn't know that going in, but I feel, I feel good about it. It really works. Wanting to save a few dollars, I stopped at the hotel and walked into the lobby, pretending I was a guest. I went straight to the breakfast bar and helped myself to biscuits. Oh, my God. And gravy. Y'all? I don't know if it was paranoia or if it was legitimate, but as I was eating, I got the feeling the hotel staff knew I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Unlikely. I was the only person in the breakfast area. After seeing three of the hotel, hotel staff talk quietly to each other and look my way, I gulped down what was left of my orange juice and made a run for it. I went out the hotel side of the door as to avoid walking by the lobby and thus the staff. Turns out the side door led directly to the outdoor pool. <laughs> Keep reading. There is a fence surrounding the pool that is too high to <laughs> jump. And because I'm not a guest at the hotel, I don't have a key to get back in and look for another exit. I'm stuck. Help. What do I do? That's from being caught stealing in Baton Rouge, and you deserve whatever you have yeah, received. Here. I actually, I've got a great suggestion. Go to jail. Go to jail. <laughs> Go to jail for the crime you did. Go to, you, you fucked up this whole thing. You couldn't at least like go to the bathroom for like an hour and then walk in from the bathroom and go eat. The reason they know that you're there, that you're not a guest of the hotel, is because you walked in from out. They saw you park your car, come into the hotel, and eat their pancakes, and then just drink your juice really fast as you looked around at them nervously and then sprinted out the side door to just like go take a, a fever dip. You fucked up every step of this heist and you need to go to jail for it. And while you're there, you can reflect on how to do better heists. You know where they got a lot of free breakfast? Jail. Jail at jail. it. Had it. Yeah. You know, All the free meals. One time uh, when mom and dad were visiting uh, uh, Norman, Oklahoma, where I went to college, Boomer Sooner, um, they were like, yeah, you and your friends come over. I think Brent w w went with me and they said, and we'll get breakfast. And when we got to the hotel to meet them, they just took us over to the continental breakfast there at the hotel. And I'm pretty sure that d isn't how it works. I did eat it. I was very hungry. I was in college, but I still feel tricked by dad uh, and by such a mom, like saying like, we'll get you breakfast, by which I mean, best Western will get you breakfast. Yeah. Eat up. They did. I they love got that. it. They got it to you. You had it. Uh, it's but that's like saying, "Hey, do you want to go get lunch? 
cool. Let's break into my neighbor's house and I'll see if they have any sandwiches. Not at all like that. Now it's breaking and entering. The other one is a, is a bending, though not a breaking of policy. It's a bending and entering. If you were going to... If you were going to kick in the doors of this hotel, if you were going to plant a C4 charge on the front door of this hotel and smash and grab some pancakes, I'm not against, you know me. If you're trying to save a buck with a little harmless steel, I'm all for it. it. I love it. But like, you would have been better served planting a demolition charge on the front door of the hotel, throwing in a smoke grenade, running in, grabbing, you know, four muffins and running out. You did a bad, bad, bad job. Especially once you introduced that the food you ate was biscuits and gravy. If you ate mm. some, like, you grabbed an individual, like, container of Lucky Charms, or you grabbed, that's like, you- a frozen Danish that had been thawed out, that's fine. That's Someone absolutely. made those biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Absolutely. I But but it's also the, it's, you know what's wild about it, Travis? Thank you. Though, I, the, something about it had been bothering me, and it's only now occurred to me. I... The fact that you sat down, you, <laughs> you motherfucker, you didn't just want to steal. You wanted to sit there and fucking relish it. Yeah. There's mm. never, I've never been to a continental breakfast where you could not have swooped a banana, some yogurt, a Danish, some, uh, 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 I don't know, even a mouthful of bacon. <laughs> I mean, whatever, whatever it is, you could have been in and out before they even registered your presence. But no, you wanted to sit down and really enjoy the ambiance of the uh, the Holiday Inn Express. And, and as long as we're just doubling down on being angry at you, our listener, <laughs> the last sentence here about uh, turns out the side door. Well, I'm led- assuming is a, is now a skeleton. Yes. in the backyard <laughs> the, of the of the Holiday Inn. The side door leads to the outdoor pool. There's a fence too high to jump, and I do not have the key to look for another exit. I feel like I'm playing fucking Zork. I don't know what else is there. I can't send in my answer by mail. <laughs> right? <laughs> do you have a Holocaust cloak? Do you have a wheelbarrow or a deck could, chair something that could build an escape plan here <laughs> uh let's do a yahoo i'm so mad no oh, no I'm hold on I, can you can you I, we don't often ask for follow-ups but i would like a follow-up that a detailed beat by beat how the conversation of you offering to reimburse them for the biscuits and gravy went like excuse me what are you doing out here uh, yes, I stole your breakfast. Okay, cool. You're going to have to rent a room now to justify eating our right. breakfast. How about I, okay, let's play a game. I, and I don't want, I, let's send jokes out of the room. I, this is a skill testing um puzzle for you. You uh, are going to steal the breakfast. You're not a guest at the hotel, but you have to talk to the staff first to, before you can um steal breakfast. What is the lie you're going to make up? You can't say you're a guest there. Are you ready? This is what I would do. I'm going to be checking in later, but I know that check-in isn't until 3 o'clock. Would it be all right if If I went ahead and grabbed something from the breakfast If I smash and grab some. I mean, uh, just grab. I didn't mean to say smash and grab. Can I break and enter into your breakfast place and have the food? I promise I will get you back later at three when I definitely stay here. Here's my ID. This is a Pokemon card. Rubble, rubble. <laughs> my pockets are full of yogurt. You missed it. <laughs> You'll never my catch da- me now. My, my, my dad was robbing you fucking blind of Danish while you were talking to me. So, Oldest trick in the book. Yeah, it's rough. So uh, how about that uh, Yahoo now? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, here's one that was sent in by Emma Kant. Thank you, Emma. It's Yahoo Answers user Round Square who asks. Okay. Come on. <clears throat> How do I make other dogs respect my dog? Mm. My mm. dog lacks confidence and is clearly not an alpha male. He acts submissive towards other dogs. I'm tired of defending him all the time. How do I teach him to defend himself so he won't be bullied anymore? Oh, okay. Mm. You probably the question asker probably means physically defending him, not like when your dog walks away saying like, "Hey guys, he's doing his best." Yeah. Hey, can we all just be cool with Ralph? How do I make other dogs respect my dog who I have to defend with my human abilities? The obvious answer is you're going to dress up like a dog. And then when the, when your dog comes around, you're going to act all scared of that dog and be like, oh, yes. I wouldn't mess with that dog. Right? You guys see this guy over here? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's rough. And, the, and then and, the other dogs will be like, are you yeah. scared? The actual Scooby Doo, and you're like, um, yes, and then you let your dog kick your own ass. <laughs> yeah, he's my, he's, he's my cousin. 
Scooby-Doo's my cousin, and I got a dad that works at Nintendo. <laughs> that dog just beat up Scooby-Doo's cousin and <laughs> Jim Tendo's son. This new dog is cool as hell, yeah. guys. His cousin is Scooby-Doo, and his dad works at Nintendo? <laughs> Why is that other dog picking on him? Hey, jerk, leave hey. Scooby-Doo's cousin alone. <laughs> Back off of our new best friend, Scooby-Doo's cousin. We respect oh, him. I was just about to show you guys my four skateboards, but it looks like I can get my ass kicked by this big cool dog. <laughs> <laughs> so that's backfired. Oh, uh, my plan. Oh, uh, that's the one. No, that's I working. Didn't see it's it. working as intended because the big cool dog is your dog. How did you guys lose yeah. the plot that fast? No, but no I'm we just didn't saying, lose the plot. They like Scooby Doo's cousin. They don't want to see him yeah. get beat up. That that is the fiction that developed. And everybody liked the new dogs, the new giant <laughs> dog, the new man sized dog so much. Well, then you show up the next day. And you're horribly injured. And Cool Dog, your dog, has taken care of you and is nursing you back to health. You know what? I like that Cool Dog. He brings Scooby Doo's Nintendo cousin around. That's we nice. humped out our differences. We, we, yeah, we figured it out together. Maybe we go the other way then, and uh, opposite of my plan, and you dress your dog up like a human, and then teach him to walk on two legs, and then you bring him around. And like all dogs, I think, instantly have some form of respect for a human. Yeah. I think that's a and good And then you part. get him a fake ID that's old enough to buy beer. Yeah. And then the other dogs are going to be so fucking stoked. Yeah. Because dogs, I don't know of a dog old enough to buy beer. I don't think there's ever been a 21-year-old dog. That's that's the dog dream. Every dog is like, if one of us can just make it to 21, <laughs> I we told are going to quit smoking, party. Jerry. No, I mean, for a, for a dog that is three. So a three year old dog could stumble into a Super America and say, Let me get let me get that that high life, please. <laughs> um Yeah, I mean Jack, you gotta get your dog jacked. You gotta huh? get him you gotta get your dog fucking diesel, yoked huge. And I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. I don't know if there's dog gyms. I know you can take them somewhere to train them for, you know, Westminster and all that. Um, sure. but I don't know how you, I don't know how you get them. There's no Ninja there Warrior must... gyms for dogs, I don't think. Can dogs build my, I was a dog trainer for a while, and I don't know the answer to this question. Can dogs develop new muscle? And I'm terrified of this. I mean, if you crank them full of pure whey and get them, you know, pulling tires, doing yeah. some CrossFit five, five, you know, seven hours, five days a week, then they'll mm. die. <laughs> Then <laughs> so don't so don't do that. But there's got to be another way. Oh, I know. Ah, uh, I here it freaking goes. got it. Oh, you put the mask on them. And oh, from the mask. Okay, or capital S- T, capital M, the mask, or the son of mask. When the dog gets it on and gets yes. really, really big. I think the dog gets on both of them, Griffin. So either one, you are correct. Somebody stop him. Somebody stop him indeed. He's peeing all over everyone. And his pee is so hard, it's, it's like a fire hose. so powerful, it has killed Jamie Kennedy. We are down <laughs> one lead actor. Please, uh, somebody save Jamie Kennedy did, from that dog. Did that dog just his... piss so hard that Jamie Kennedy died? That's a cool dog. That's Not an, another Kennedy. That there is an alp. <laughs> Did you know that Jamie Kennedy is Robert Kennedy <laughs> and, and John F. Kennedy's little brother? Did you know that? I did not know that, He's Travis. the last one. I started a new job about five months ago, and one of my coworkers and I started bonding over mediocre romance novels. Hot. The problem is I haven't read any since middle school because they're so heteronormative. Mm-hmm. Not hot. But I remember a lot about them because my mom still loves to read them all. My coworker is in her 60s, and she's just happy to have something to talk about, so I didn't mention this. Two months ago, she recommended this series of 20-ish books that she has all of and offered to lend me the first one. I accepted with no intention of reading it and returned it after a week saying it was really good. Oh, no. <laughs> God damn it. You have to come to us before you fuck up. <laughs> this is the breaking into the hotel <laughs> breakfast of human, of, of human social uh, inter- interchanges. This is rough. She came in the next day with the next three books. Now I'm on book eight. I have not read any of them. How do I make her stop? Oh, my God. And that's from, oh, God, there's actually 26 books. Folks, you have to tell us the names of these franchises. We can't. And you have to you have to reach out to us before you fuck up. But I will say at this point, it seems like you've already got a fine trajectory going. You've made it through eight. 
you got 18 more to go. If you can just keep up this, like, take it away for a week, bring it back, like, yeah, super hot. I loved all the caressing. And then, like, maybe you can make it through all 26 um, and, and come out the other side. Half a year gone, yes, but you're free now. You're free from this genie's cave. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm uh, going to sign for a package. Yep. Oh, got a sign for a package. <laughs> nice. This is how all great romance novels start, right? Yeah. Somebody shows up at your door with probably alcohol if you have to sign for it and be over 21. Griffin took out the stylus and whipped his stylus around, signing on the tiny <laughs> electronic pad. The, the letters spilled out of his hand <laughs> like so much. Black jizz. <laughs> like first so much a G. black ink jizz. Ink jizz, first a G, and an R, and then an I. Could and you an spell F. your last name for me, said the delivery person. I'm about to climb it. I'm totally going to finish, and <laughs> I don't mean finish. the delivery, although I am going to deliver an orgasm to you. I'm delivering a plentiful orgasm oh, did you need me. another orgasm i could be back tomorrow with another delivery or go back and add your middle name and i'll climax again <laughs> yeah what did i come yeah. back to what did you come back to indeed nice. Ugh, yeah that was the delivery <laughs> so if you guys i was signing for a package did you guys already come up with like funny fake names for the thing because i usually do those but if you already did them i don't want to double up wait sign what sign for a package Wait, what? We were making it like you were in a romance novel where you were being oh, romanced and by I the delivery person. I was going to make love to the mail carrier. Yeah, you said you had to sign yeah. for a package. Okay, so package. yeah, yeah, I can tell you what happened down there if you want. Yeah, make it saucy. His name was Garbanzo. <gasps> yeah, the <laughs> sexiest well, sexy. name. He was eight feet long. <laughs> <laughs> what? He and he handed me my package. I said, this, this looks like the special shoes I ordered for the boat. And then he said, yes, yes it is. <laughs> you ordered special orthopedic boat shoes? I ordered boat shoes, but not boat shoes, but shoes for a boat. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, you Garbanzo. Like Garbanzo kiss? No. Go in. Go into extreme detail. I'm done with pornography. Go into extreme detail about your boat shoes. Are they shaped like boats? Boat shoes. They breathe really well. Anyway, Garbanzo said, have fun on the boat. This is just chapter one. You don't bork oh. in chapter one. Of course. I wish that they would. Just get that out of the way. Chapter one of the romance novel is where all the sex happens, and then the next 27 chapters is just like a character doing their taxes. Yeah, but the problem is uh, Garbanzo turned into a sw swarm of bats. He flew away. <gasps> Classic. So, Sexy. Classic. Uh, yeah, now, how can, I, how can I resist? The bats? Yeah, let me get it put in that cloud of bats. Nothing, nothing, nothing makes me hardier than Garbanzo, the cloud swarm of bats. <laughs> Um, that's my favorite uh, Night Vale character. In case anybody is, everybody's been asking, my favorite Night Vale character is Garbanzo, the swarm of bats. It's also my favorite Magic Tavern character. It's yeah, it's a crossover, uh, crossover. crossover event, and Griffin has sex with them. Not yet. Not God. yet. Sorry, God, Chapter Magic Tavern th already does have a living swarm of bats as a character. That's Jesus such a better Christ. show than ours. Should we go to the money zone at least? Yeah, they don't have a money zone. Go ahead and start. I gotta, I gotta feed the cats. They're scratching at my door. Ooh, gotta feed the cats. Uh oh. I won. So I wasn't here for the last time you did this, but like, are we gonna be like, um, does that make you horny, baby? No, Griffin. Here's one about Casper. So Casper makes mattresses, and uh, when you get on them and you fall asleep, uh, then it's the best. The best dreams. You definitely get the best dreams. Uh, your bones feel better and get longer while you mm -hmm. sleep on them uh, because of how it's sort of it cradles your natural geometry creates an environment that is really, really compatible with bone elongation. 
And yeah, there is one thing. Mm. It's while you're asleep, you're actually absorbed within the mattress. Yes. And as soon as you wake up, you're popped right back on top. So you're absolutely fine. You'll never know it. You You'll won't never know. know it unless the Goblin King comes up. In. Yes. Now, now you've got an issue. But Casper guarantees ninety point nine point nine 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 percent chance the Goblin King will not attack. No way. So we have not done any of the things that they want us to say yet. So here's Correct. a lot of that. They got free shipping and return to the U.S. and Canada. Uh, it's, it's no hassle. If you're not satisfied, you get to try it for 100 nights. And then if you don't like it, you just send it right back. And you banish the Goblin King right back to once he came. And uh, we have, we I think we all have Caspers at this point. You've heard us talk about how comfortable they are. But I'll say it again. It's pretty freaking comfortable. You can get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting Casper.com slash brother and using the promo code brother at checkout. That's Casper.com slash brother and promo code brother for $50 towards select mattresses. Terms and conditions apply. I'm starting to think that these businesses listen to our show because they've stopped including the phrase enter my brother in here. Yes. Which yes. Is they, they've wised up. Phenomenal. I would like to tell you about uh, MeUndies. Now we've talked about me on these before. I could tell you about their like underpants and shirts, which are like three times softer than cotton. Um, they're they're different prints. Uh, you can get like solid colors, adventurous prints. You can match with your partner, whatever. I want to talk about the sleep pants, which is uh, I think maybe the greatest invention ever given to humankind. Real good. Um, they are the comfiest things I've ever worn ever. Um, and I would like to be buried in them. Um, and you can get your fifteen uh, percent off your first pair of MeUndies, free shipping, and a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee if you go to MeUndies dot com slash my brother. That's MeUndies dot com slash my brother. Do you have teeth? Griffin yes. does. But if he wants uh, the space between f- clean, he's got that covered. But what about the nasty fronts and backs? Well, that is the purview of Quip. Uh, designed to the make backs and fronts are ass. They're ass. Back away, water pig. Oh, they're affordable um, teeth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing something else right now while t- we're talking about this? No, I just sat back down. I'm trying to get my fucking bearings. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even, dare we say it, enjoyable. They've got sensitive sonic vibrations and a built in two minute timer. That pulses every 30 seconds to remind you to switch sides. Brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended schedule every three months for just $5. You know, it's always exciting to get a package, and sometimes it's toothbrush heads. Quip is backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip, that's Q U I P, dot com. Slash my brother right now. You get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's a refill pack for free at G E T Q U I P dot com slash my brother. Wow. Good. That that jingle was free. So they didn't even have to pay for that extra. Unlike Griffin Space Jam, which had to pay $500,000. I'm so rich. Have you ever watched a movie so bad you just needed to talk to somebody about it? Well, here at the Flop House, we watch a bad movie and then talk about it. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. We'll watch it and we'll talk it. We do the hard work. Featuring the beautiful vocal talents of Dan McCoy. Stuart Wellington. And me, America's Rascal, Elliot Kalin. New episodes every other Saturday at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast, dude. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I have a Yahoo here that was sent in by Level 9000 Yahoo. Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's uh, from an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call Baby Boy Asks. All right. Jim Carrey tribute party, smiley face, Monica. His best movies he's made top six. Things I should decorate with. Food, uh, activities, uh-huh. contest, music, act. <laughs> 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 Which I believe is supposed to mean etc. Uh, anything to make this party off the roof. Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thought, again, anything to make this party off the roof. Ultimate. Ha ha. Smiley face emoticon. Please. And thanks.
I would say, just off the top of my head, if you want, if you want to make it like a real Ultimate Jim Carrey tribute party, you're going to need to reference Copper Mountain, uh, the film he did in 1983 that was a made-for-TV movie co-starring Alan Thicke. Hmm. Um, that was hmm. basically a an hour-long um, commercial for a Club Med location. Um, that sounds great. It's a great, listen, a great film. Um, you could also maybe do All in Good Taste. Another Listen, Travis, we know, we know, uh-huh. we know. Hey, did you guys know that Travis knows a lot of Jim Carrey stuff? Yeah, okay. hey, we get okay, it. Okay, let's, let's talk about snacks. Number one, he's Eggman in the new Sonic movie. So I would say eggs. Yeah. That, that's right. first. And that one's taken is, care of. That one's taken care of. Maybe just um, pieces of rubber. It, his, it, in that TV show he's on, He's, I think he's got a puppet or something named Mr. Pickles. Um, so pickles. <laughs> uh, how about some incredible Burt Wonder toast? Ooh, that's and good. It would be Burt toast. <laughs> that would be another Eter- one. Eter- oh, like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Guacamole. That's very good. Earth Girls are cheesy. That's good. What's that one? Earth Girls are easy. <laughs> yeah, no, but like, oh, it's just cheese. Is- like, but you get cookie cutters, and it's like that. You know, like a, a like shaped like a woman. There's also cable, the cable pie, and this is That's a pretty good. <laughs> this one. You're gonna take all those spare HDMI cables or those red, white, and yellow cables that we don't use anymore, and you're gonna put those in a short crust. Mm-hmm. Plum and plumber. <laughs> oh, delicious! It's We're it's gonna... a bunch of plums, and you put a picture of Christopher Plummer on them. <laughs> It's, we're, we're gonna start off the evening with some aperitifs. We got a s- sampling of different beers to enjoy. It's called the All oh, Flighty. Then okay, it's just, uh, good. It's a I good like place that. to start. The okay, man so on the moon pie. That's snacks. We got snacks. Fucking nailed down. The six fryer fryer. Uh, things I should decorate with. I think a big sign over the front door of the party that says "Do go in there" is oh, a I good like start. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Um, end of that. Know, end of that one, though. That's, I guess that's, all we, that's the <laughs> decorations only decorations are harder than snacks. You, you can blew just right have, past snacks. I didn't blow just, right past snacks. We spent a long time in snacks, but we have lots of things to figure. Oh, hey, listen to this. Me, myself, and Pyrene. It's just good. like your pie, but this is another one. I can't believe this dude's playing fucking Doctor Robotnik. <laughs> I need to take a minute away from the bit and just close my eyes and visualize that good <laughs> wrench heat he's going to bring to this honored role of oh, Dr. Hey, Ivo don't forget, Robotnik. Don't forget uh, the series of unfortunate events heat too, Griffin. He's been yeah. so great in character roles in the last mm, five to 10 years. God, I can't wait. Um, Why don't, hey, I've got an idea for the party. Mm. <laughs> Why don't you have um, Ed Harris show up and just every once in a while, like peek at people out of the, from behind a corner or something like that with his camera. Wait, around. so is Ed Harris a decoration in your mind? Yeah, he's Ed Harris is a is sort of a perform <laughs> performance. Piece. I do like that. Just have Ed Harris move from closet to closet and whisper like, <laughs> "Zoom in, zoom That's in." Good. Uh oh, um, uh oh, uh, Daryl's double dipping. He's double dipping in in the uh, the guacamole. Everybody, zoom in on Daryl's gross zoom in on Darryl. gross dip. Uh, so I think activities. Mister Popper's penguins. That one speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Every time a new guest comes in, you say, "I love you, Philip Morris," and they say, "Yes, man." And, and then that's yeah, like a that's a code. good sort of call and response. And also, you could all just be you just have free cigarettes out. And that could also be the smoking movie. That's good. And then also you could um, like confront some of your friends who have been lying to you for a while. Like if you know you have a, like a, an untrustworthy friend, this could be a chance to be like, liar, liar, right? And then uh, see who's lying. Or you could make it a fun party game, but I like mine better where it's like the culmination of like maybe some deep-seated distrust. If we wanted to do a contest, we could just do Jim Carrey impressions. Well, oh, okay. The problem is everyone's super good at them, so it yeah. just end up being a tie. Yeah. Like Justin, do yours. Okay. Um. Hello, I am Latka. Okay. I mean, that's my impression of Jim. Yeah. Doing an impression of Andy. Doing an impression of Laka from Taxi. Here, can I do one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like they got murdered with a knife made out of their own bones. 
And that's from Dark Crimes, his 2016 <laughs> movie he did. Ah, uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, this is sort of a darker. Here, can I try again? This gosh dang number keeps showing. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love this character. I remember this film. Just finish the impression. This gosh dang number keeps showing up all over the dang place. Did you figure it out yet? Farts. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I believe. <laughs> I'm now gripping broke himself. <laughs> oh, it's just nice to laugh. It's just nice to laugh. Oh, it really is. Uh, did we do all of them? What didn't we do? Oh, music. Yeah. If um, just play that fucking uh, Cuban Pete from The Mask until just everyone leaves. Loop. <laughs> until everyone leaves. I think I could make it through three. It depends. <laughs> it depends on how good the shit. Spotless Mind guacamole is, because that might get me to stay for a couple, <laughs> couple more. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, with the etc. I don't think. That's between I you. I think etc. is just invite Jim Carrey to be there. He would have a great time. <sighs> he's, he's the only guest. He's the only guest. This party's almost certainly going to go off the roof. <laughs> someday, you guys promised me someday we can record a commentary track for Ace Ventura, Pet Detective Jr. I think about, do you guys have things that you think about a lot? That yeah, my wife and seen, kids. But oh. you're kind of like you're obsessed with theoretically, but you can't really bring yourself to actually ingest. Yes. Oh, so it'd I, be a, a coming in fresh commentary track. Yeah, it would be like a first time watch because Ace Ventura: Pet Detective Junior is like that for me. Came out in fucking 2009. Never seen it. I watched the trailer for it probably 500 times, and I've never watched the movie because I know it wouldn't be pleasurable, but I am, like, obsessed with the idea that it exists, I guess is the best way of putting it. Do you guys have stuff like that? Yeah, I still have not seen, oh, what's the fucking Johnny Depp? Mordecai. I still have not seen. I've seen a lot of Mordecai, but I couldn't finish it. I watched, I think, the first 25 minutes of it. Yeah, I, I was about to say Mordecai didn't age well, but Mordecai didn't birth well <laughs> yeah this is shame how about another question yeah i love that farm <laughs> wisdom Whoa. farm wisdom don't make a blunder down under farm wisdom that's not farm wisdom this is a farm wisdom what? that's right we're going to farm wisdom australia in addition from uh ben hetherington no sent us wrong. Uh, Incor- w- no way was that right <laughs> ben Hetherington. Okay. The, yes, you you fully skipped at you least one syllable. Fully did. Person. Yeah. I was coming in hot. There's a lot of letters all jumbled together, and I was just trying to 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 churn through it. Ben Hetherington, Miss Farm Wisdom, and rather than complain like some people do when they miss bits, Ben made it happen, bringing us some uh, Australian farm wisdom. Uh, here's if you have farm wisdom to submit, please do. This is one of my favorite segments to do. It's just hard to find the exact right flavor. But I think Ben has done an admirable job here. Kangaroos and emus cannot walk backwards. The structure of a kangaroo's pelvis and tail won't allow it. However, nobody knows why emus can't. (gasps) So it, it might just be won't. But that's why they're both featured on the Australian government's coat of arms and out uh, uh, and the uh, 50 cent coin they're supposed to signify that our country is always moving forward. I would maybe hazard that there are other reasons kangaroos are on the Australian currency, but I do like Ben's uh, suggestion here. Yeah, Ad Astra and all that. I, I, mm. Ben, you got these things running around on a farm, bud? Maybe an emu, I'll give you that, because they have the big eggs. But I've never had kanga milk, I don't think. People eat kanga meat. I mean, kangaroo meat is is pretty popular. I mean, they have kangaroo farming. There's a kangaroo, commercial kangaroo industry. Yeah, so read a book, Griffin. Yeah, read a book. I would like to pause it, Ben, and I don't want to put you on blast, but th- I say this only because it's exactly what I would do. Is it possible that some people might know why emus don't work backward and you don't? <laughs> uh, Nobody <possibly>. knows. <laughs> okay. Um, I bet somebody knows. 
There's apparently, according to the Wikipedia article called Kangaroo Meat, that my day has taken a strange, twisty turn. <laughs> I didn't expect to be here when I woke up. There's a thing called Kangatarianism, and that's where you only eat kangaroo meat. You're so wild for it, and it's apparently based on environmental and ethical grounds. Uh, unsurprising. Goats smell really bad. Surprising. It's a common occurrence here to catch wild goats, and the best way to do so is to track them by smell. Wild goats are common in areas in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland and Australia and can fetch a tidy profit when sold to a goat farm, even with our especially blunt sense of smell. A person can tell the size and distance of a goat herd at distances of up to a mile. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, goats don't smell very good. Damn, that was fun. I'm just, it's just, <laughs> I, now I'm on it. I'm just on the Wikipedia page called Kangaroo Industry, and I'm trying to turn my fucking ignorance ship right around. You can't get me, if I'm reading about the kangaroo meat industry, and you come at me and you're like, goats don't smell good, I'm, there's two pieces of information presented to me. I'm going to go with the savoriest nug. Dingoes eating lamb has been a big problem for stock farmers in Australia, and the easiest solution is to buy alpacas. Alpacas hate the living shit out of dogs wild or domestic and will often bond with sheep and act as their guardians alpacas can deliver a devastating kick and a as devastating a, insult yeah they're so mean their insult comedy is beyond reproach oh, alpacas can deliver a kick as their hooves will grow in displayed claws if not trimmed and can hit anything within two yards in any direction the lamb birth rate can be significantly improved by having alpacas in the herd because they make sheep feel safe and the reduced stress allows the <laughs> ewes to carry a lamb to term. I, this is fucking soup to nuts bananas. <laughs> what this this is said, what this is said is like let's just take it one thing at a time. Okay, the dingoes eat lambs. Yes, that all tracks for me. Alpacas hate dogs. Okay. I uh, will have to take your word for it on that. Alpacas can deliver a devastating kick as their hooves will gl grow into splayed claws, if not trim. So you basically have to choose an alpaca that you that you are making bad already. Mm -hmm. You are letting grow into a battling alpaca. And can hit anything within two yards. In it. That's six feet. <laughs> what? <laughs> What are these alpacas fucking doing? Yeah, they look... In what sense, Ben? They look so goofy, but they're actually the predator. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> they can kick up to six feet? Am I understanding that correctly? If I'm understanding it correctly, up to six well, feet. I don't see how it's possible, In any ben. direction? I think two feet of that's just claws. I also, I think my favorite part of this, though, is like a sheep looks around, sees what it has to assume is a giant version of itself, and says, that makes me feel comfortable fucking. <laughs> like, That's chill as like hell. That. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally carry this baby to term now. Look at that giant ass sheep here. <laughs> It, like, if I looked over it and there was, like, a 12-foot Travis, and I was just his like, legs yeah. were, His legs were guns. <laughs> I feel comfortable now. Like, I'm horny as hell. <laughs> Let's go. How about a question, or is there more farm wisdom? No, that's all the farm I wisdom I like that. I, I mean, I ask for more as if I need more. That's, that's, I am sated. That's good. That's good stuff. Thank you, Ben. Folks, keep that farm wisdom coming in. Would love to have a little bit more of it. Uh, how about another question here? Every so often, some coworkers and I will go out for a night of KOK. -okay. We all have fun, but I'm easily the worst singer. Kind of screechy. God, I love that fucking awareness. Inspirational. It, I'm the worst singer in the group, and this draws a lot of teasing from the whole office floor. I have a good sense of humor, and I'm happy that everyone can laugh at my mangled 80s hits. But I thought taking an actual singing lesson would help me get out of the comically bad range. To my surprise, a number of my coworkers were very against the idea of lessons saying that I was taking it too seriously and being a killjoy. Should I continue with the lessons, or is it wrong for me to deprive everyone of my unique voice? And that's from Musical in Mobile, Alabama. I'm going to go Super Saiyan over here. I've never, been, I've never been confronted by our questions as much as I have been this one episode. Yeah. Because, hey, 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 why did you tell your coworkers about the singing lessons? Why did you tell your coworkers about the singing lessons? 
You didn't want to have that, right. that. You didn't want to have that. She's all that moment where you get up there and you're like, oh yeah, you made fun of me in high school when I had this job and saying weird. Well, look at me now. I am like a bird. But you, and you sound <laughs> that good, like that, like an angel, like I just sounded. Because I, I took I, singing lessons, I didn't tell anybody about it. I hate to break it to you, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Period. But I'm also afraid that your coworkers like that you're not good at karaoke because it makes them feel better at it. And they're going to say, like, oh, you're taking it too seriously. But they're afraid that you're going to become a dominant karaoke -er. mm -hmm. And that they, because here's the thing if you stop being the bad one, someone else is going to become the bad one. Yeah. And they're all afraid it's them. Mm, um, too true. You need another reason to be getting good at singing. I think maybe you're trying to get up on the voice. I think you're trying oh, to meet Gwen. I think you're yes. trying to meet Gwen and the fam. Can I proffer, proffer this? Stop going to karaoke. Keep taking singing lessons. Six months from now, the friends are all at karaoke. And then a new singer enters. They're wearing a tiger mask Ooh. and a tiger costume. Uh huh. They're an amazing singer. No one can guess why this tiger has entered the karaoke uh, room that they have rented. <laughs> They're scared for their lives. <laughs> Hours pass. Wait, oh, sorry. Tiger. Is it a believable tiger costume? It's a. It's a. It, no, it's very cl colorful. Okay. And powerful. And hours pass. Your friends drink with the tiger. They bond with the tiger. <laughs> they learn the tiger's likes and dislikes. Um, the end of the night comes. You exchange numbers with uh, a guy that you met there. You go home. You lie down. You realize that you forgot to dramatically reveal that you had been the tiger all along. You remind yourself the next time for sure when you show up at karaoke, well, you will definitely, definitely, definitely pull off your mask dramatically to reveal that you were, in fact, the tiger all along and that beautiful voice was attached to you. The former, um, uh, not so great singer. They it's had. time goes by. It's you best. realize it's been three years. You married that guy. You're still the tiger. You're still always. He loves you the tiger. Back, be, you wonder you be. what have I become, and the answer is you've become the tiger. You're more comfortable yeah. now as the tiger than you've ever been before. And then one day he pulls off your mask, and your head falls off. Ah! <laughs> it, you go back to karaoke. They don't remember the tiger. So we're basically starting from scratch again. <laughs> you can just be a great singer. You don't have to be a great singer to excel at karaoke. There are two songs. Um, uh, our our uh, former boss, Christopher Grant, uh, sings does karaoke with a passion and a gusto that I find profoundly moving. And the gusto and passion are on point. And I'm going to stop there. But Chris is also, through his karaoke artistry, introduced me to Hames the Wire mm. And a uh, telephone line by uh, 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 Yellow that I had never heard either of those songs before. Two songs that I adore brought to me by the artistry of one Christopher Grant no. uh, and his karaoke skills. It doesn't matter how talented you are. Now, let me say this, though. Don't do cake. You're going to be tempted to do cake. But mm -hmm. then one minute in the cake, you're going to realize it's pretty fucking boring. People liked, this... People liked cake when it was cake but they don't like me faux caking out here because it's just mostly talking I, about true. cars. I'm basically talking lie. about driving fast. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't think that uh, this is a great karaoke. You don't song. have to sing good to do karaoke. You do have to love the song you're doing. There, love I've the seen song. so many people make the mistake of doing like, I'm going to do a funny song. And then they pro most likely don't know the song well enough to do it. But two, halfway through, everyone's like, okay, I get it. And now we have another like five minutes of meatloaf left. Yeah, practice your songs at home, folks, because you never know. Um, it's so important to be great at karaoke. It's the most important thing. Uh, that is going to do it for us uh, on My Brother, My Brother, Me this week. Uh, thank you so much for indulging us and letting us uh, sort of just jab your ear off here. I feel like we, like we barely let you get a word in edgewise. Uh, but we, we very much do appreciate it. Hey, can I, real quick, before I forget, like I forgot last week, we're going to be on the going on the Joko cruise soon, yeah, uh, which is very exciting. But out there, on that there open ocean, we won't have much internet. So if you're going to be on the cruise and you have a question that you would like us to like answer, please send it in now and include like Joko cruise in the subject line so we can go ahead and put together a question list 
for our live shows on the boat. Speaking of, uh, next week's episode on March 11th is going to be our live show from New Orleans. Uh, I just edited it, and dang, that was a fun one. Uh, and then the week after that, we're going to kick off the Max Fun Drive. Uh, so we will uh, we'll have more on the Max Fun Drive. If, you, if, if you're a new listener of Mabim Bam, we're part of Maximum Fun, uh, which is a, a pledge-supported network, and you can help us out and all the other shows that you like and get some cool, uh, get some cool stuff in exchange. So uh, that'll kick off the week of March uh, 18th, and we'll tell you more about it then. Also, when you're listening to this, it'll be March 1st, which means that there will have been new it will McRoy not, merch. It will not be March 1st. It will be March 4th, which means that there will have been new McRoy merch on the uh, up for sale for three days. Um, and there's some really cool new stuff. And we're going to try to keep putting more and more new stuff up there all the time. Um, so if you want to check it out, go to McRoy.Family and click on Merch, or you can go to McRoyMerch.com. And while you're at McRoy.Family, go ahead and click on Tours there and get your tickets to see uh, The Adventure Zone in San Jose, uh, My Brother, My Brother, and Me in San Jose, and so uh, My Brother, My Brother, and Me in Salt Lake City. That's April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Get those tickets, McRoy.Family. Click on Tours. Uh, is that it? Thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. Go listen to Dr. Game Show on MaximumFun.org. We just picked them up. Excited about that one. And y'all want that final. Yes. yes. This final Yahoo was sent in by uh, Level 9000, Yadru Drew at Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's Yadru Answers user Jurik who asks, Ants with wings. Who are they? <laughs> my name is Justin Mac- I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad, square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Welcome back, and thank you, Dan, for that scathing report. As you know, Max Fun Drive is coming up March 18th to March 29th, which has some folks pretty excited. But as families around the world get ready to celebrate this season of giving, community, and quality podcasts, some are wondering if it's just too much. Are they, though? They are. Some people are all for comedy and culture, but with 45 shows offering hundreds of hours of bonus content, plus all the Max Fun meetups taking place around the world, some people think it's too much. While other people think it sounds totally awesome. I took my granddaughter to the mall to get her picture taken, and the mall pod ferry was short. And I, you know, I'm just gonna say it, I'm sorry, but everyone knows the pod ferry is tall. Well, I think we should just leave it there. <laughs> Until next time, here's the news you need to know. Max Fun Drive runs from March 18th through 29th. Be sure to listen to all of your favorite podcasts. I know I will. 